So, uh, yeah, welcome to our presentation in, in the context of this Hilti IT competition 2020. As you can see, we would like to present you a solution concept for various problems with, it, with the name a crypto economic incentive system for tools data management. So who are we? So my name is David, currently working as a research assistant at the Chair of Innovative and, and Industrial Construction at ETH Zurich. My teammate is Jens, um, he's a PhD student at the same chair and we both studied civil engineering at ETH. <clears throat> so in recent years, there has been a strong trend of various industry towards the so-called uh, industry 4.0. And we would like to take the definition of PwC here as a starting point. In the first step, they are defining the building blocks for development towards industry 4.0, consisting of two components, these are connected devices and data and analytics. The question now is, what does it mean when applying this to the Hilti company? It means to provide tools that are smart and to a certain extent linked together. And through um, these extended functionalities, it is then possible to learn from recorded data and information in order to generate value on a company level as well as on a customer level. In detail, what means to generate new value or additional value? Um, PwC defines their three points. The first point is related to the integration of the supply chain. By applying that to Hilti, we mean a deep understanding of the value chain to enable optimization in production and stock level. And Hilti could therefore establish a bottom-up system through intelligent data analysis, where it's possible to recognize faster when and where certain tools are needed. The second point is offering new digitized products and services, where Hilti can do analysis of data sets of tools, which lead to a, down, to a downtime reduction, because it's possible then to recognize in, in advance when a tool should be maintained. In the end, this broad development of ever more data available opens up new business models, which makes it possible to even more to be even more competitive than uh, before. But what are the challenges and problems that stand in the way of such a development? In our opinion, the problem lies in, in two categories, categories, which are also consistent with some objectives of this IT challenge. Um, we define as the first problem or challenge technical problems related to the connection where the goal is a consistent data flow with relevant information and not simply creating a huge data lake. Assuming now, assuming now you're the construction worker, um, let's call him Bob. So Bob is working with a smart self-drilling screwdriver, for example, the ST1800. The construction site is, is dirty, sometimes rainy, and in general, the weather is changing every day. As his tool can record various data, he wants to upload them. Now he's confronted with the first challenge, the connection. To enable a data upload, he needs a connection within this dirty, rainy environment, and that's kind of difficult, right? So he surely has to go into the building barrack, which means an extra effort for him. This could be solved by even smarter tools, which means enhancing the, the network technology to provide a constant data flow. However, in our opinion, and that's the second problem within this connectivity category, such a development does not lead to the goal because it, it will certainly increase technical challenges due to storage and processing capacity, and it will complicate the, the post-processing of data by LT. And even if there's a solution for this first problem, we have a second classification of problems, which can be found in human and legal related issues regarding trust and privacy. This is concerning big data and analytics. What, that, what does that mean in, in concrete terms? Um, so after years of uploading his data, Bob goes to his boss and asks him, what actually happens to this data? And the boss answers, well, I don't really know that either. Honestly, I have no idea. So in summary, that the customers and users have a feeling of a kind of big brother is watching and somehow their trust is undermined because it's not clear how and to which extent Hilti is using their data. And since it's not clear what, what happens with the data, it's also not uh, clear for Bob and his boss if it's necessary to spend more money on these smart devices since they lose the understanding of the extended functionalities. 
In addition, one aspect that needs to be considered is the regulatory boundaries. So in, in recent years, we, we had a lot of political and socioeconomic discussions as well as regulatory issues regarding this data ownership. Now, the question is, what if there's a new technology that could tackle challenges in both human and technical dimension? In fact, there is a new technology and it's called blockchain. I'm Jens, I'll take over from here. A blockchain can be briefly described as a decentralized entity to the cloud. But what it is all about, uh, there are three value propositions that we used uh, in our solution. So I want to introduce them to you now. The first value proposition is to establish trust in data. What does that mean? By saving data in, in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network in a very specific way, I don't want to go into too much technical detail here, you create an immutable and transparent ledger and so data cannot be changed so people can trust the data without any intermediary and it's visible to anyone uh, in addition uh, every device and every user has an address in that network and you can do very fine grade privacy uh, options with this uh, blockchain doesn't distinguish between humans or things so it's very much suited for transactions between the two and therefore for the internet of things and industry for zero in addition, there is a category I call process automation because you can use something called a smart contract on blockchain. And in fact, that's what we did. And you can see a code snippet of one of our smart contracts for this prototype. And smart contracts are they're not smart, they're human coded and they're not contracts per se. They're just code protocols to customize things of, on a blockchain. As a Swiss, we like to say as like a Swiss army knife. And with that, you can do this unstoppable process, but you also can do and create incentive systems. And you might know Bitcoin or Ether as one example of a token, in that case, a currency, but you also can do create new tokens that are value can containers of different kinds. So this might be a security or part of a physical asset represented on the blockchain or also a voucher there are a lot of possibilities and combined with these smart contracts um, you can create whole incentive systems like micro economies without intermediaries like a bank on the blockchain so this is very abstract and uh, how did we use that in our prototype so our solution uses blockchain as a trusted and transparent data storage and also where we have our smart contracts and then we have a guilty token uh, that can, can be earned by users when they upload IoT data. And this, in the end, creates a win-win situation. So the users can access benefits and services from Hilti, while Hilti can uh, have the whole data uh, available and also has kind of a customer loyalty program because uh, the customers, they want to spend that Hilti token later on and tend to stick with Hilti. So that's the high level. How does that work in a bit more detail? So the situation is as follows. We have Hilti on the one side. They want to take advantage of Industry 4.0 and new business models uh, through data collection. And on the other hand, the contractor, which is the customer of Hilti, which also employs Bob. So they, Hilti has these smart devices and Bob on the side uses these tools. Uh, he likes them very much. They're very nice tools. And then something like that is uh, ideally um, happens. You have automatic uploads, the data gets saved in some databases. Hilti then performs some analytics and uses this to do value chain optimization as we have seen at the beginning uh, to optimize the supply chain, uh, downtime reduction, just in time delivery, stock reduction. There is a lot of opportunities here. So very much what Hilti wants to do. Um, the question is then, why is this any good for the contractor? Hilti then answers, well, we provide you a lot of nice digital services in addition. And Bob says, yeah, that's very good. Now, tool park uh, optimization and things, I like that. But what about my data? It's very intransparent. I don't really know what you're actually collecting all the time. Um, maybe this is just uh, taking advantage of me to make money on my behalf, right? And in addition, 
automatic uploads as seen are challenging in, a, in an environment like the construction site. And if this breaks, the whole value chain breaks. And this is really not, not what Hilti wants in the end. So how to, do, how to solve this? They really cannot rely on the contractor because he really doesn't care. There is no direct connection between the value proposition uh, of the data uploads and the digital services. It's very intransparent how this all happens. So our solution uh, proposes this, that we save data first uh, on the blockchain in the middle. Hilti can you still use it uh, for data and uh, for accessing the data and do analytics, but also the contractor can access it and finally see what data is collected and use it for warranty claims or other things. Um, but still the automatic uploads uh, is, might be still an issue how can blockchain help there? And there the incentive system comes into play. If we replace these automatic uploads with manual uploads by Bob uh, or semi-automatic uploads, um, where Bob is re responsible for this, uh, uh, this could solve the whole value chain and finally go back to the state that he'll be likes. But why should I do this as Bob, right? And we're by using smart contract processes that give Hilti tokens to Bob every time he performs an upload, uh, he has an incentive to do this because the contractor which employs Bob can spend it then for uh, digital access of digital services or reduction on the fleet lease. So there is a direct connection between the uploads and the services provided by Hilti, by Hilti and creates in the end this win-win situation. There is opportunity uh, to do even fine-grained, uh, more fine-grained incentive systems that also reward Bob on the construction side, like a Hilti upload power user by collecting specific tokens like that. And it also solves legal issues because Bob needs to opt in in the system. Um, uh, this, this makes the life of legal a bit, a bit easier. So we did a full stack implementation uh, of that prototype with Ethereum as a blockchain backend where our smart contracts that uh, uh, encode these processes and tokens are, are living and the browser-based front-end application using React and MetaMask, which is needed to connect to the blockchain. Uh, code is on GitHub and our, YouTube is on, uh, our video is on YouTube. And we do have now a short uh, demonstration of our video here. But I'm not so sure if it works. My computer gave me an error with system audio included. So could you please give me a short, um, uh, if you hear, if you hear anything. So today you our newest episode of the Hilton yes, we channel we have with us. Sure. Bob was two or three months ago here and we were discussing about the, the new reward system by Hilti. So Bob, how it's, how is it going with the reward system? Great, great, great. I love the system. It's just uh, brilliant. I'm here to show you that today. So I usually use my tools normally on the side, no internet connectivity. And if I take a break or after my workday ends, I take the tool back to my construction cabin where I do have internet connectivity. I connect all the devices. I set up um, my Hilti OnTrack app and I log in uh, with my account. And now I'm also connected to the Ethereum blockchain. You can see my address here, uh, my unique identifier. And then I can upload the data. So I do a new upload. And you see the new added data, data point. Everything is visible, everything is transparent. And I do have now eight Hilti tokens credited. Every time I upload data, I get a new Hilti token credited. So I already have nine Hilti tokens. Let's claim my new eight. And I do have 17 now. Uh, my current discount at Hilti, I'm a very good customer, 10%. So let's claim another 10 Hilti tokens. I get discount here and I put in 10 here and I click get discount. So now I have 20% on the new fleet lease and I still have seven Hilti tokens left. So this system is great. So I can also send these tokens uh, to, for example, Tracy, and I send her one token, send, and I see now we have 
six building tokens left. So blockchain is just great. Everything is transparent. You can send these tokens. No one can cheat the system. I do have all my data transparent and visible in case I do have warranty claims. I can just go there and see um, and prove that I didn't do anything wrong. And Hilti also profits. It's really a win-win situation. I usually, they also have the data uploads. And I got contacted recently that so they replaced one of my Hilti tools um, from the fleet based on the data I uploaded. So great system, very well done, Hilti. Love blockchain. Um, a really good addition to the on-track. That's clear. So, yeah, thank you for the interview. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, that was our short uh, demonstration of the prototype. All the processes you've seen are encoded and handled by the smart contracts in the in the back end. So you don't see blockchain in the end uh, from the customer. Um, so the, the interaction is actually quite easy. And we believe that this system has very uh, has big potential regarding new business models uh, and how Hilti deals with uh, Industry 4.0 and these devices. It is clear that uh, the one-to-one -one conversion of token to discount uh, on the fleet lease is maybe not the most realistic case, but it's a, it's an IT competition. We also ha uh, had had some fun with it. So I, I, I hope that you still see uh, what this where this could go in the end. With that, I hand back to David to the key takeaways. Good, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Jens. So now what are the key takeaways of our proposed solution? Um, we have again divided them into these two categories mentioned above. So on the one hand, connection. On the other hand, trust and privacy. As shown, we, we try to connect Hilti smart devices to a new way of data management. And our solution is liberating the human factor. That means that the customer or user is intrinsically motivated to provide his data. And by that, we bypass the, the technical challenge by using a blockchain-based incentive system. As already mentioned, this creates a, a win-win situation between Hilti and the customers. Hilti receives valuable and consistent data sets that can be further processed, and the customer benefits from obtaining these Hilti tokens in possibly multiple ways. The prototype developed um, shows the feasibility of such a concept, and we have noticed that the application can still be further developed in, in various directions. And if you, if you look at the second category, you can see that the blockchain is guarantees you trusted data storage and clear access rights. By introducing the blockchain into the relationship between Hilti and its customer, trust is enhanced and customers are bonded for the longer term. Through the gamification of the system, the customer are accepting the solution more and the opt-in system leads to more legal clarity. And with that, um, we thank you for your attention and are open for questions.